first day getting there, I don't remember exactly that I took a nap, but likely as not I did. And then probably by about midday or afternoon, I noticed the kids coming down, a lot of the teenagers and whatnot, and they were all like, you know, running around and pointing and laughing and playing and stuff like they would and checking each other out and who's going with who and that whole thing. You can kind of predict certain little social scenes, things that were going on, kind of figure out if they're like kids most anywhere and have all the little different dramas going on. But here I started to look in the trash cans and there'd be the brown paper bags that a lot of the kids brought their lunch in and some of them were hardly even touched. It'd be a baggie with a whole sandwich, peanut butter and jelly sandwich in it, not even opened. Or, you know, they hadn't even eaten off the sandwich in any way. Uh, whole bags of potato chips, not opened. Little snack bags, little nabs, bags, uh, packages of crackers. Uh, pizza wrapped in baggies or in saran wrap or luna foil. Uh, hoagies, all kinds of food. And not just a little bit, but a lot, more than I could eat. So whereas in some circumstances I would consider whether I would eat the last half of a sandwich where it was two halves and the person had eaten most of the first half but left it in there with the other half the eaten off half with the other half and I'd make the decision well do I want to eat that other half that's not been eaten off of take the chance it's not contaminated and most of the time they'd be fine to eat that you know especially if that half had not been eaten off of but in this case I didn't need to worry about that there were plenty of whole sandwiches that there was no part of it eaten off of I didn't have to worry about the bag of half full of Doria's nacho corn chips eating the one that was already open because I had already had found three or four bags that weren't even opened. I wouldn't have to worry about the apple that it had a few bites out of it or the banana that had been halfway peeled down because I already found a couple of apples and a banana whole that had not been eaten at all and so I started gathering the whole stuff, the stuff that hadn't even been touched which was a bounty lots of it and if I didn't particularly like it if I looked at it and I said well I don't think I want to eat that or it was half eaten or opened already or any other defect in it I tossed that on onto the sand for the seagulls so sure enough by the time I'm going in at the second third or fourth can I've got a whole troop of 10 or 20 seagulls following me along and I'm throwing this uh, chips and sandwiches and pizza out on the sand and I was kind of hoping because I've seen in the past where some of them would fly and catch it in the air but it looked like these guys weren't interested in all of that trouble they could just wait for it to hit the sand and then they gather around and gobble it up and it's kind of fun watching them each day as I was doing this they'd all kind of gather around usually one or two of them were the big birds you could tell puffing their chest out and whenever they find a big piece of something that they were going to eat it was like they were having a big celebration or declaring it as theirs ah this is my big piece of corn chip over here don't you guys try to get this piece of corn chip you know and inevitably the other ones would try to snatch it and he would chase them and they were having a good time and I was having a good time and we did this non-stop for probably seven days. It was probably a full week. I was in Zuma Beach and eating so well every day. And that's why I was saying so key that it must have been, all I can figure, it must have been these maybe junior high to high school students who were coming there every day with their lunches. And they'd eat a sandwich or half of the sandwich out of the baggie and maybe a piece of fruit and throw away the rest of their lunch in the bag, they had a whole bag of chips, whole half a sandwich, and maybe some cookies, and not even look at that stuff, and just throw it in a trash can. And I found, I think, cans of drink, I found cookies, I found cake, I found just, you could name it, that somebody would wrap it and put it 
in someone's lunch bag for lunch, for school lunch, I probably found an example of it, and oftentimes it's not found more than one example, and more than one that hadn't even been open, had not even been eaten off of. And so I was eating fig newtons and Oreos and nacho Dorito chips and potato chips and corn chips and sandwiches and pizza and just hot dogs, you name it, cake. Every day ate really well. I ate enough or gathered enough that I had a good meal while I was doing it and had another meal toward evening when it was actually dark. Of course, I was doing this right as it was starting to get dark, I think, because uh, I tried to be as least amount of disturbance as I could. You didn't want to necessarily go up and down the beach with all the kids still there and all. It's a little bit uh, embarrassing to me a little bit, but also just kind of, you know, you don't want to give them a bad feeling or impression or, I don't know, part of my thought of it was that uh, the least amount of interference or bother that I caused, the less chance that anyone would have a complaint or the police would be called or I'd be a nuisance or vagrant or whatever, which I was, but I guess I tried to keep the nuisance amount down. And I did that every day, so much so, for a week straight, it was like, just, I didn't think of going anywhere else. And it was a real nice beach, beautiful beach. It was kind of unusual in one aspect, is that although it was really wide, and probably, I don't know, 100 to 200 feet of sand before you got down near the water, and then it started sloping fairly steeply, the last, 20 feet or something of the beach down to the water itself and then even under the water it was a fairly steeply sloping beach so if you walked out 20 or 40 feet by then you weren't touching the bottom anymore real quickly actually the uh, water got real deep or deeper than where you could stand up in it and um, so I, I said that the waves had this washing machine effect and that the water tumbling onto that beach was real kind of sudden and kind of rough. If you were caught in the water a certain way, uh, it would tumble you along and you'd kind of get smashed into the sand a little bit, so it could be painful. It could kind of scrape you up a little bit. And uh, I don't know, I, I, I could imagine someone could drown weren't careful doing that. I would try to body surf. I'd try to lay down in the waves and let the wave crash over me, kind of pushing me along toward the beach. But um, sometimes the wave would catch me in such a way it pushed me down instead. I'd go down into the sand more. So it was a little rough, but uh, it was fun. I mean, I enjoyed that. Every day I'd get a good swim in, help keep me clean, um, get in a little bit of sleep, a little sun. This was back before the sun was bad for you. <laughs> back before they had the scare about all the UV rays and the lack of the ozone and cancer cells. And I guess, I don't know, it existed then too, but people weren't as afraid of it then as they are now. But uh, it was a wonderful, beautiful part of the trip. 